large ads in area newspapers talking about that reward money and offering it in the case. Coal industry officials and representatives of the United Mine Workers are meeting behind closed doors at this hour. They hope that they can settle the disagreements in the grievance procedure that's led to wildcat walkouts in the coal fields. The meeting follows three days of hearings during which miners claim the coal companies promoted the walkouts to force up prices and also reduce some of their stockpiles. Firefighters in Uricksville, Ohio, spent the morning battling a fire and a gutted out two businesses and also damaged four others. That was before it was brought under control. The authorities say the fire began at about 3 o'clock this morning. There's no estimate of damage, and there were no injuries in that fire. In Hopedale, they've got other problems tonight. Residents are being asked to use as little water as possible. City officials are hunting for a leak in that water system, spraying up someplace, and right now they still don't know where. They're warning that the water will be turned off in several areas of the city while the hunt is going on, and that's continuing now. So if you turn on the spigot and there's no water in Hopedale, don't panic. In Weirton, a merchant says many downtown businesses are going to fold in the next few months because no one in the city administration is going overboard to try to help them with the parking meter situation. Daryl Reinhardt says the downtown area is lacking curbside parking spaces because Weirton is changing traffic lanes to conform to new traffic light systems designed to speed the flow of traffic on Main Street. He also says there's a slim possibility the city parking authority might find some money to subsidize off-street parking lots, but that could just come a bit too late. When you have businesses that are reporting a 50% loss in their uh, daily sales, I think that this is just about as critical as you can get and uh, uh, without thinking of, uh, of relocating your business. And, and I can tell you of uh, at least a half a dozen businesses on Main Street that have reported to me a, a 50 percent loss in their business uh, over the past uh, five or six weeks since this parking has become such a problem. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any interest in uh, re-establishing uh, the parking there. Uh, because of that reason, I feel that uh, Weirton, as a downtown business district, has really uh, seen its better day. Reinhardt is organizing a group to be known as the Independent Downtown Merchants Association of Weirton. They're going to try and cope with the parking problems as well as some of the others that have been affecting business. State troopers and also the police in Ohio and West Virginia are teaming up at this hour with a massive search for an Arco gasoline tank truck that was hijacked at gunpoint earlier this morning. The tanker carrying nearly 9,000 gallons of gasoline had just left the terminal when the hijacking occurred. Ohio highway workers who sued to get their jobs back lost another round in the courts today. A judge in Columbus ruled that state departments have the power to lay off workers to accomplish budgetary cuts. The workers claim that there were political reasons behind those firings, but the judge says that he hasn't been able to find any proof of that. There were some gambling convictions in Steubenville, and we'll have that story when News 9 continues. When you work with money as much as me, you get to be an expert. Like, where to get a loan? I say someone you can trust. Like city loan and savings. They're a different kind of loan company. They handle savings accounts, too. They got deposits over 150 million bucks. If people trust them to handle that kind of dough, you can trust them to handle your loan, right? City loan and savings. What makes us a different kind of loan company <laughs> makes us a better kind of loan company. Comfort, yes. And confidence. This, too, is yours in Cordoba. Here is the confidence of knowing your automobile possesses a look of great dignity with seats available in soft Corinthian leather. Plus the confidence one can only have in a truly roadworthy automobile. All this in a most surprisingly affordable small Chrysler. Cordoba. Now is the time to save over $200 on a Kimball Spinet piano. Torero Music is celebrating their anniversary sale at all five locations. Buy now and save. Choice of styles in this rich walnut finish. Sale price at only $788. We pass the big savings on to you from our quantity purchase for five stores. This is only one example of big savings in all departments. Organs, guitars, musical accessories. A small deposit will hold any item for Christmas delivery at all Torero stores in Steubenville, Wheeling, Washington, Illyria, and Zanesville. Frank 
hamburgers, hamburger, meatloaf, saving money by serving plain meat, then make the meal not so plain with Betty Crocker scallop potatoes. Tender slices of russet potatoes in a velvety smooth white sauce. Or this golden brown hash brown with just a touch of mild sweet onion. Or au gratin. And now sour cream and chives with plain meat potatoes from Betty Crocker. There's an old adage in my family when you sit down at a gambling game or a card game, make sure you know what the stakes are. Apparently, some people in Steubenville didn't know because they're paying some pretty heavy fines, up to $40,000 in fines, plus sentences of up to 10 years in prison. Those men were convicted of federal gambling charges today. The FBI says the men, employees of the 631 Confectionery and Freddy's Pool Room in Steubenville, were operating gambling establishments, and that's in violation of the federal law. George Jordan can have his job back, according to Governor Arch Moore. That's the word out of Charleston. The former West Virginia banking commissioner was acquitted yesterday of charges of defrauding the state on his expense accounts. Jordan was suspended while those charges were going through the court proceedings, and now he's being considered for his job once again. Well, News 9 now presents a look at the food price hit parade. And our favorite companion of Snooky Lanson and Dorothy Collins is Al Owens. This week's big hits were the old standbys, bread and potatoes. Potatoes went down 30 cents, while bread dropped 27 cents. That was the good news, now the bad news. Sugar rose 10 cents, and bacon went up 11 cents a pound. But for the most part, our list of 17 supermarket staple items stayed the same. Items such as ground beef, canned corn, eggs, and coffee were the same as last week. But with this week's plunge in prices of bread and potatoes, the list dropped 41 cents, from last week's 18.73 to 18.39, but this week's list still exceeds last month's prices for the same period by 24 cents. Al Owens, News 9. And if you're out shopping, the biggest and best trends seem to be in meat and coffee. Both have remained about the same prices for the past month. Well, Mike, all hopes of a merger between Belmont Technical College and Ohio University at Belmont County have died. OU at Belmont has decided that that merger wouldn't be in the best interest of either of the two schools. The decision not to merge was made formal yesterday by a letter went from the regional council to the Belmont County campus. This is a time when almost all of the nation's minorities are being heard from, and one that's becoming increasingly vocal as time goes by is the nation's elderly. They're starting to speak out. And at the Masonic Temple in Steubenville this afternoon, 300 members of the Jefferson County Retired Senior Volunteer Program were honored. It was the third annual Senior Recognition Day, and spokesmen from the world of business and the political arena were on hand to take part in the event. Organizations and individuals were given awards for their service to the various county projects, the RSVP and its members, and everybody else who's taken part. Well, it also looks like Ohio civil servants are never going to have the legal right to strike. Majority Democrats failed in their effort to override Governor Rhodes' veto of the right to strike bill. That would throw out the Ferguson Act in Ohio, and it appears doubtful that the controversial issue will be considered in the next session of the state legislature in Ohio. If you refuse to start your Christmas shopping until the first snow, well, today may have been your big day. Fran Severn's got the full report on exactly what you can expect, shopping-wise and maybe even a peek at the weather. If you're on any kind of a mailing list, sooner or later you'll start getting mail-order catalogs. Shopping out of these books can be a real time saver, especially if you have a busy schedule, but there are a few things to watch out for. First of all, check the prices between catalogs and, if possible, between the books and the stores. Often the store price is cheaper. And order well in advance if you want the item delivered by Christmas. Allow at least a month for delivery, more time if you can. Indicate your name and address clearly on the order form. A lot of lost orders get that way because the post office can't figure out where the package is going. Pay for your order with check or a money order. Cash is too apt to be lost or, unfortunately, stolen. If your check doesn't clear the bank within two weeks, contact the company to make sure they received your order. The canceled check also serves as a receipt in case there's a problem with your order. One warning, a lot of swindlers send unordered COD packages so neighbors pay the charge as a favor. The often expensive confusion can quickly chill the holiday spirit. But in spite of all the precautions, mail order buying is still one way of wrapping up the holiday chores without leaving the house. Fran Severin, News 9. Another little consumer item for you. 
and that is if packages arrive on your doorstep that you didn't order, no matter what it is, really, consider them a gift from the company, because if you didn't order the merchandise in the first place, you are not responsible, no matter how many bills they send you. Outgoing Pennsylvania Democratic Treasurer William Casper is going to testify before a federal grand jury. That grand jury is investigating forced political contributions, payoffs to politicians. Casper was sentenced recently on state extortion as well as conspiracy charges. And the jury wants to find out what he knows about demanding contributions from state employees on the threat that if they don't come across with a fat contribution, they're going to lose their job. Well, a look at Turkey Country coming up on News 9. Life on the farm, fresh as can be, running through the meadow just you and me. Digging in the garden, hiding in the hay, swinging on the porch like the good old days. Bob Evans Farm Sausage is made with all the hams and tenderloins included. You'll agree it's the best sausage you ever tasted or Bob will give you your money back. That's the kind of farmer he is. Mm -hmm. Bob Evans, down on the farm. Coal production is necessary and important for our future. By the year 1985, our need for coal will double, and that means that coal production as well has to double. The Ohio Valley is very much a part of this task, and we've accepted the challenge. By the use of the gem and those invaluable miners, the job is a bit easier. But after the coal is gone and the miners go home, the land will be restored. Remember, coal production is vital to our future. The Ladies' Day sale at Carlisle's is a great time to buy Christmas gifts on your budget. Everything in the stores at the season's lowest prices. Ladies' Day 2, Friday and Saturday at Carlisle's. We've hatched a new symbol at Macomb's Chevrolet Oldsmobile Cadillac. To remind you, we trade a lot of cars to a lot of folks, so we sell a little cheaper. Turkey for chicken feet, cost a little bit of scratch is all you need. Macomb Chevrolet Oldsmobile Cadillac, the little cheaper dealer in Caddis. Well, with Thanksgiving coming on, everyone's thinking about that turkey on the table, but just think of how it was years ago when the pioneers were getting ready for that first Thanksgiving. That's part of our history, and our special look is called Nine Country. Nine Country is sponsored by the Ohio Mining and Reclamation Association, the people who are planning for the future. In the pre-revolutionary years, colonies and local governments freely gave land away as tokens of esteem to loyal workers. Virginia's boundaries then extended almost to the Mississippi River, and the government sent surveyors to divide the land equally for the colony's former soldiers. The trip was a long one. The surveyors traveled from the capital of Williamsburg through the wilderness by horseback and on foot. Finally, the surveyors reached the Ohio River and took canoes to Mingo Junction, Ohio, where they resumed the trip on foot. The Mingo Indians greeted the visitors, feeding them and acting as guides. Neither they nor their guests could imagine that one of those surveyors would become famous for his political contributions, George Washington. I'm John Huffman, and that's another look at the curious history of Nine Country. Nine Country is sponsored by the Ohio Mining and Reclamation Association, the people who are planning for the future. Taking a quick look at the world of business right now, New York stock market started the day on the upswing, profit taking came in, market prices went down. For those of you who go by all of the numbers that you see, we have the probably the big key indicator for the big investors. The advancers, 784, declines 622, and the unchanged 451, that's 784, 622, and 451. And I've got to say, automobile dealers are doing pretty good. They all reported first 10 days of this month were great business, including AMC. Their business is up 100% over last year. American Motors? Yep. American? Well, last year they sold one car, too. Great. That's 100%. <clears throat> You can only buy them with snow tires on at this time. As standard equipment, huh? you know. <laughs> and get ready for the winter. Yeah, it's here. We're getting it, though. That cold weather, I had my big blue overcoat on today, just trying to keep warm. Looks like a leftover horse blanket. Oh, by the way, do you recall the night we all sat here and made our projections as to when it would right. snow? Who was closest? 
I was. You were wrong. Was, yeah. No, I thought he. Was. When did you pick? I said by the uh, 14th. No, you didn't. <laughs> I think he did. No, I had it. No, I, I said 17th. I said Thanksgiving okay. night. I had the 17th, and I was wrong, but I was closer than he was anyway. Here, you get a news name. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, the weather it's coming up next. <laughs> Sometimes, the hardest thing to believe is what you see with your own eyes. A 500-pound grizzly bear, the most dangerous animal in North America, showing one man open affection. The timid deer and the unpredictable cougar actually joining this man in play. All this and more actually happens in the life and times of Grizzly Adams. This motion picture will take you deeper into the wilderness than man has ever been you will see what James Adams saw. You will share his wonder and fear. And you will experience the most unusual and heartwarming wildlife story ever documented. Come share the life and times of Grizzly Adams. You will never forget it. Rated G. Starts Wednesday for one week only in Wheeling, Steubenville, and Weirton. Coming soon to New Martinsville, Carrollton, and Woodsfield. See your newspaper for theaters and showtimes. Temperatures plummeted overnight, so did the air quality index, which is always good in this case. Right now, the air pollution index is 42. That's in the category of excellent. And on the tri-state map, we have snow showers there. It occurred today, the first of the season. More expected tonight and again tomorrow. But those temperatures went down, such as a 34 as the low in Youngstown, a 39 in Cincinnati. We were also in the mid-30s in this area. And right now, we're close to that. Temperatures ranging from 35 through 39 degrees, they'll get down around 23 tonight. Now let's take a look at our facts and figures and also the fact that that's not snow, that's road salt. The highway crews are always ready well in advance and low temperatures too. A high today of 53, a low of 34. Normally on this date, the high is only 50, a low of 34. We had a record high of 74 in 1955, a record low of 21 in 1950. Present temperature 38, humidity 30%. Winds out of the southwest, 4 to 6 miles an hour. That barometer is now steady at 29.04. And with the snow showers, we had a trace of precipitation. And as you see, those temperatures had gone down today. And uh, all the thermometers got a little bit of a workout as they dropped into the 40s, now into the 30s. Looking at the tri-state map, this is the frontal system that went through. The snow showers, well, they're all the way from Maine down to North Carolina at the present time. Out through the Midwest, it's snowing in Indianapolis, Indiana at this time. Heavier snow up in the upper Great Lakes. They've had 8 to 10 inches there in upper Michigan, northern Wisconsin, and northern Minnesota. Of course, freezing weather here. Those temperatures, as we predicted yesterday, would get into the freezing category as far down as Texas. In fact, Abilene, Texas had a low at 5 o'clock this morning of 26 degrees, and they didn't like that in Abilene whatsoever. And those temperatures will continue to be cold tonight. In fact, frost warnings are out even as far south as northwestern Florida. They expect the freeze all the way down here to that particular category. Everything fair out in the western third of the country except for rain right now going on in southern Oregon. Well, let's take a look now at uh, at least the weather to tear down an old house and make another lot available. Some people are always busy at various tasks. We expect snow flurries tonight, a low of 23. Snow showers tomorrow, cloudy skies continue, a high of 38, a low of 22. Saturday, fair, high of 44, it'll be cold, a low of 28. Sunday, fair and clear, a high of 48, a low of 34. And on Monday, warmer weather, if you want to call it that, because the high should be around 50 and the low, 38 degrees. So there you are, Fred. It's sort of uh, in between seasons here, and uh, that is the season of autumn and winter. I think I finally mentally prepared myself for winter, I guess. I'm glad of that. I mean, it's something to do. You know? Heartbreaking, but uh, got to accept it, I guess. Huh? <laughs> Still savoring their President's Athletic Conference football title, Bethany College placed three players on the all-PAC first team today. Sophomore Carl Clemens, who was moved from tight end to guard, grabbed one of the offensive line slots, while senior Bob Williams was chosen as the place kicker. And on defense, Bridgeport's Mike Billica was named for the second time as an all-PAC defensive end. He received that very honor as a sophomore. A trio of Bisons were chosen on the second team, offensive guard Al Sayoka, running back Tom Miller, as well as defensive back Dave Kapalovich. 
World Team Tennis is very much looking forward to their third season in 1976, and they should be very optimistic, especially after today, because the WTT Phoenix Rackets signed the queen of women's tennis, Chris Everett. She signed a two-year contract today, which makes her the highest-paid player in that league. A former News 9 Offensive Player of the Week does it again. We'll see who he is in a moment. This old brick building, constructed in 1814, was the yearly meeting house for all of the Quakers east of the Ohio. And for its day, it was an engineering achievement capable of holding 2,000 persons on the main floor and in the galleries. It also served as a haven for runaway slaves, as the Quakers were very much against the slavery system. This old building is still standing in Mount Pleasant as a monument to the Quakers' contribution to American life. This bicentennial remembrance was brought to you by the First National Bank in Steubenville. It's time again for Coe Valley's annual fall sale, and that means winter is approaching fast. Come in and compare prices. We have fabulous savings through the month of November to prepare your home for the cold months ahead with factory fresh fiberglass insulation and insulation building board. To further increase heat retention in your home, Coe Valley has a large selection of quality paneling plus all accessories. At Coe Valley, you save on all prices and later on your heating bill. Open an easy charge account. Plenty of free parking at Coe Valley, 240 Coe Road in Weirton. In my establishment, my Moran stereo system is going all the time. Good thing it's built strong as a blooming tank. First rate quality. And the built in Dolby noise reduction system helps make the sound so real that listening to the pipers is just as if I were back with my old regiment. All over the world, people consider Moran stereo one of the finest in the world. All Moran's equipment available at Lafayette Radio Audio Showroom in downtown Steubenville. The great Zambini will now perform his amazing rabbit trick. He will miraculously transpose all the people and luggage that are in this mid-sized car into this Volkswagen rabbit. When people discover that the rabbit has as much headroom and legroom as some mid-sized cars and holds all this luggage, they never cease to be amazed. Outside of Wirt and Madonna, the 1975 high school football season was put away for the schools in the Ohio Valley last weekend. It was quite a season for the Caddis Cardinals as they won nine and tied one. And one reason was the running of number four, 44, that big guy Jeff Konjerski. The 6'2", 205-pound senior rushed for 1,326 yards this year. For example, last Friday night he picked up 202 yards and 17 carries, running in three TDs, plus he caught a 35-yard scoring pass. So for the second time, Jeff is our News 9 Offensive Player of the Week. Some running backs try and sidestep tacklers, but Jeff told our Red Donnelly he sometimes has to use his size. Well, first of all, I, the only thing I can do is run hurt because I don't have the fantastic speed to go around him, so just either hit him head on and whatever goes from there. If I break the tackle, go from there, that's it. Defenses get tough inside the 10-yard line. What kind of play do you like to run or see uh, occur inside the 10? Oh, it's straight up the middle. We have a fantastic line. It just opens up the hole wide open, and up the middle is just about the best place. As a ball carrier, you prefer any running inside the tackles or going out around the flanks? I like both, really, because outside you have a choice of where to run, and inside it's just hitting a hole and going from there. And Jeff beat out three talented players for the award. Wellsville's Chuck Christman was second, with Tim McGorian of Woodsfield third, and Mel Stock of St. Clairsville fourth. Since I missed five games in my fearless football forecast last week, my percentage is still at least at 71%. Here's this week's 15. In one high school game, Wirt and Madonna will take their third state Catholic title by beating Clarksburg Notre Dame. In college bowl, Ohio State will rip Minnesota, and West Virginia will make it 8-2 and, and win at Richmond. At Pitt, I like the Panthers to upset the Irish. Oklahoma will outlast Missouri in a Big 8 struggle. And in another important Big 8 game, which you'll be able to see Saturday on WSTV9, Kansas will upend Colorado. In Pro Bowl, the Steelers will handle Kansas City at home, but Cleveland will fall again for the ninth in a row at Oakland. In a pair of games on WSTV9 on Sunday, Detroit will defeat Green Bay, while St. Louis will get by Washington. Miami will hand Houston their third loss in quite a tussle. Dallas will bounce back against New England. And on Monday night, I'm taking Buffalo to knock off the Cincinnati Bengals. And what were you snickering about? You, say, you don't think I'm still at 71%? No, you're terrible. Huh? You, are, you are the greatest myth maker around. <laughs>
And you've got Pitt over Notre Dame. Sure. Huh? It, well, that's one that... All the Irish wrong. Catholics hate me now, but uh, no, I'm taking uh, Pitt. They're not alone. No. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> sailing cash buck too, but here's one couple they didn't boo he ha Now listen to Paul and I learned to eat. I'm looking for quality, not something cheap. Hee ha They got a system that just won't fail. Don't buy nothing you can't resale. Hee ha He told me a fellow that's really a nice who's got good service and a cost plus price. <laughs> <laughs> this Mr. Cos Plus, he represents those Huber boys, sir. Do make sense. Yee haw! <laughs> While well, Huber's first of all for the birds, Forty is the art, just heed his words. Yee haw! <laughs> so if you're in range, can hear our voice, drive to Carol from Huber, who's got your choice. Chevy Olds and Subarus, Fords and Murphys for you to choose. Monday and Thursday's open till 9 and sales and service. Ain't that fine? Yee haw! I was watching Hollywood Squares this morning, got kind of stumped. The question was, does a member of the U.S. Supreme Court have to have a law degree, true or false? And the answer to that happens to be false, that anybody can be nominated to be on the Supreme Court. Now women's groups across the country, I don't mean to put it that way, that anyone can be nominated, but women's groups across the country now hope that a woman jurist, a lawyer, someone completely qualified, can now take the seat on the Supreme Court that was vacated by yesterday's resignation by William Douglas. Supreme Court Douglas yesterday said he had no prejudices against women, but he didn't say whether or not he wanted to see a woman on the high bench. One person who is speaking up in favor of that is a lady who takes seat number two at the White House, our first lady, and she seems to have an opinion on most things these days. She has indicated that she feels it's time for a woman to hold the high seat, be on the Supreme Court of the United States, but of course the decision rests with her husband, the President. And he says it's going to be some time before he makes any decision at all. Square dancing. I thought Brett was going to read this over the film. I'm taking a rest. You're resting. Square dancing seems to be quite the thing these days, especially in Wintersville for the youngsters. But it's, well, it's done by a lot of people. Kind of a tribute to the Bicentennial, and that's what the kids at Wintersville Elementary School were doing today. Something different for the Bicentennial, so they staged a series of dances from different periods of American history. The kids wore everything from pirate hats to grass skirts, and they played to a full house. It's such a success, the square dancing by the youngsters, that they plan on doing it again. And for those of you who watch beauty contests and root for the hometown girl, you are in luck because Miss Ohio is one of the eight semifinalists in the Miss Teenage America pageant. The annual affair is underway in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The winner is going to be picked Saturday night. Also Saturday night in Belmont County, Brett Cornwell will be sitting in for me as the MC of the Miss Belmont County Junior. I'm finally getting a good one for a change. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. The CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite is next.